Hey everybody, welcome to the Faith for Life broadcast. I'm Matthew Elaria. Let's have a word of prayer and then we're going to get right into the teaching today. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your word. Lord, we ask you today for revelation of your word. We ask you today for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives. And Lord, I release my faith today over everybody watching the broadcast, and I thank you for ministering to them today through this broadcast in a great and in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, four episodes back on the broadcast, we started a series of teachings that we're calling Thy Word is Truth. And friend, as always, if you missed any of the teachings or you want to go back and listen again, uh, you can find them on Facebook, YouTube, MAM.TV. And uh, if you have missed any of the teachings, I would highly suggest that you go back and listen. I believe as you do, you will be ministered to in a great way. Praise the Lord. Let's go back over to John 17, 17. That's been our foundation text in this series. And in this series, we've been discovering some very important and powerful truths about how things work in our lives, in this life, in this earth, and in the kingdom of God. And in John 17, 17, Jesus said there, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Psalm 119, 142 says, Thy law is the truth. Verse 151 in that psalm says, Thy commandments are truth. The 160th verse says, Thy word is true from the beginning. And then Psalm 33, 4 says, For the word of the Lord is right. And then like Psalm 18, 30, it says, The word of the Lord is tried. The word tried there means that it's been tested and proven true. And so we said on the first broadcast that if God says something, then that's the way it is. Why is that so? Because His word is is truth. And so if he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you, then that is the way it is. What he says is law. And when you're talking about law, you're talking about something that has been tested, something that has been proven, and something that is an established truth. And so, did you see that in Psalm 1830 where it says, The word of the Lord is tried? A lot of times people will say, Well, I sought first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and things that I needed weren't added unto me. That doesn't work. What they're saying is, they tried the word and they found that the word wasn't the truth. Well, that is a lofty accusation. But the scripture says that the word of the Lord has already been tried and proven true. And so it's not that the word didn't work, because maybe you didn't know something, didn't apply something, didn't see something, didn't stick with it. Could be a number of reasons why you're not seeing it work for you. But friend, never make accusations about that doesn't work or that's not true when you're talking about scriptures. Thy word is truth. If God says something, that's the way it is. If he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you, that is the way it is. And so now you're getting into something that we've been talking about on the broadcast called spiritual law. Spiritual law is a statement made by God that a certain thing will always happen if uh, certain circumstances are in place under certain conditions. Let me read that to you again. A spiritual law is a statement by God that a particular thing always occurs if certain conditions are present. And so it's the idea that if you do this, every time you do, this will happen. We looked at a scripture, I think, uh, on one of the broadcasts about how um, that we are made righteous by faith in Jesus and that everyone that believes on Jesus is made righteous and there is no difference. And so what it's saying is that is a law that will work for everybody and anybody, anywhere, no matter who they are, that will work. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe with your heart that God raised Him from the dead, have faith in Jesus, you will be made righteous, you will be saved. That is spiritual law. That is established. 
that works. It works every time somebody gets involved into it without question. Why? Because of thy word. His word is truth. And that same thing can be said about Matthew 6, 33, about Romans 8, 6, to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And any other spiritual law you find in the Bible, it is the truth and it is the way God says it is. Praise God. Now, last time on the broadcast, we finished up, and I want to jump right in, back into this, discussing about how prayer does not override spiritual law. That a lot of times people are desiring a result contrary to laws they have in motion, and then they just try to pray the result in. We saw it last time in Malachi chapter 1, there, the priests of the day were dishonoring God. And yet they were praying for God to honor them and bless them. But God said in 1 Samuel 2.30, there is an established truth, there is a spiritual law found in 1 Samuel 2.30. The Lord said, them that honor me, I will honor. They that despise me or dishonor me, they will be lightly esteemed, they will be dishonored. And so these priests that are dishonoring the Lord, well, they have a law in motion. And the law that they have in motion because they chose to dishonor God, that law says, God says, it's not just the law saying it, God's the one that set up the law. God's the one that said, if you uh, despise me, you'll be lightly esteemed. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to pray around the law that they've put in motion. In other words, they're not honoring God. and They don't have any intention to do so. They're just going to try to pray and get God to honor them anyway. And it does not work like that. In fact, we found uh, Proverbs 28 and 9 says, He that turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. And so people that ignore what God says and then try to pray and get God to do something, the scripture is saying that kind of prayer is an abomination to the Lord. And so this is how a lot of Christians have been taught to live. They pretty much just think if you need something to happen in your life, you just ask God to do it. And if it doesn't happen, I guess he just didn't want to do it for some mysterious reason that we don't know. And a lot of the body of Christ is pretty ignorant about how things actually work. And the way things work is anything that you want to enjoy in your life, you got to get involved in the laws that will produce that thing in your life. And so they wanted to see God honor them in Malachi 1. Well, they don't need to pray. No, praying ain't going to do any good. God honor us, God honor us. That ain't going to do them any good. All they need to do is if they want God to honor them, the only thing they need to do is just start honoring the Lord because there is already a law that God set in emotion, them that honor me, I will honor. And so a lot of people are just taught, well, just pray, just ask God, just ask God, just ask God. And a lot of people are asking God to do things that are contrary to laws they have in motion. And then when it doesn't happen, they think, well, God just didn't want it to happen. That didn't have anything to do with it. God could have wanted it to happen, but He can't do something in your life when you have a law in motion that opposes what you want to be done. Um, Jesus said this. He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, a lot of people are trying to live by petition, live by praying and asking God to do something. That's how a lot of people live. If I need something, I just pray and ask God to do something. And they live that way. That's how they try to live. Jesus said, man lives by the word. And what that means is that he lives by doing what the Father told him to do. Not just by asking the Father to do things for him. And see, friend, you and I are not supposed to be trying to live by petition. We're supposed to be living by the word. That's how you and I live. Find out the spiritual laws laid out in the Bible that will produce what we want to enjoy and then get involved in those laws. And so this will be a controversial, strong statement. I don't mean it to be. 
But prayer, in the sense of asking God to do something, is not always the answer. Oftentimes, God doesn't need to do something. You and I need to do something. I want to say it to you again. Prayer, in the sense of asking God to do something, is often not the answer. So often we need to do something. It's not that God needs to do something. Friend, you can't pray everything away. In other words, if you want something to get away from you, everything you want to get away from you can't be prayed away. You can't pray away something being produced by a law that you have in motion. So if you have lack in your life and you're not seeking first the kingdom, not trusting God, not putting his things first, you can't pray that lack away. No, you got to you got to get a law in motion first. You got to stop putting God's things second and third and fourth, put his things first. And so see, just praying to try to get that away from you won't work. And that's what people do for years. They have problems in their lives that are being produced by laws they have in motion. And then they try to pray the problems away. It doesn't work like that. You can't pray everything away. And you also can't pray everything in. You know, somebody, well, I just need some peace in my life. God, give me peace. God, give me peace. God, give me peace. The truth is he's already given you peace. And in his word, he's laid out laws that govern peace. And if you'll just pay attention to what he says, where peace is concerned, and do it, you will enjoy peace in your life. But if you ignore what he says about peace and enjoying it, and you could pray for the next 24 years about God giving me peace, and you won't be enjoying any more peace 24 years later than you are today because you're ignoring the laws that govern peace. And so we got to watch about trying to um, misuse this so what I call so-called prayer. Misuse it. What does that mean? Ignore what God says, pay no attention to spiritual law, and then just try to pray stuff in and pray stuff away. And what people realize is that doesn't work at all. It doesn't work well. It doesn't work at all. Because you're ignoring spiritual law. You're ignoring what God's laid out in His Word and trying to bypass all that and just pray stuff in, pray stuff away, and it does not work. Religion tries to use prayer as a fix-all. You have a problem, just ask God to do something, and it's very convenient because it leaves us in a position where I don't have to do anything. I don't have to seek God. I don't have to seek first His kingdom. I don't have to honor Him. I don't have to do anything. I can just do what I want and ask Him to do what I want Him to do. <laughs> and it just does not work. Jesus said man lives by the Word. We live by the Word. We live by the things God has said to us. We don't live by the things we ask Him to do for us. I'm quoting the Master. We live by the the word. And so Proverbs 4, 7, uh, let's go ahead and flip over there. I got two messages left for just one, one week here. So uh, I'm going to try to get a couple of these things in. But Proverbs 4, 7 talked about how wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. And so in every situation, that is true. Wisdom is the principal thing. And, you know, there are a lot of Christians who have never in their life, when they have a problem, they never pray, Lord, give me wisdom about this. You know what most people pray? They say, Lord, fix this. <laughs> but a lot of times the problem is, it's not that the problem needs to be fixed. The laws you have set in motion need to be fixed, and that'll fix the problem. Wisdom is the principal thing. And so often prayer when we go to God and ask Him for something, what we should do is a prayer should be for wisdom and then implementation. Not prayer, God fix this, do something. No, prayer, Lord, what, what should I do about this? What would you have me to do about this? Then what God will do is He'll point you to spiritual laws that will, and if you get involved in those laws and you're a doer of them, it'll get rid of the problem that you're trying to get rid of. Prayer is for wisdom and implementation, not just prayer, God, do something. Start praying, Lord, what should I do? 
give me wisdom. And what he'll do is he'll point you to spiritual laws that'll help you get rid of the thing in front of you. And so God will point us to laws that will produce the results that we desire. But again, many people don't want to do anything. They just want their problem fixed. And here's what would happen if you have a law in motion that is producing lack in your life. You've got laws in motion. You don't tithe. You don't seek first the kingdom. You worry. You don't trust God. All this stuff. If you have those laws in motion, but then you go to God and say, God, bring me your provision. Bring me your provision. And God just rains His provision down upon you. A, a, a month's worth of provision. Do you know that in a month, because you still have those laws in motion, those laws that govern lack, not seeking first the kingdom, not trusting God, not being a giver, because you have those laws in motion, that law will actually get rid of the money that God gave to you. And so the reason that God is not just interested in doing everything for us, He's interested in getting you to get involved in the right laws, because if you get involved in the, in the laws, it'll produce the things that He wants for you and the things that you want in your life, that'll have a sustaining effect. See, God's dealing with the root of the stuff, where the stuff's coming from, not just the fruit of it. And so you got to watch how you, you and I try to, try to use prayer because you can, you can uh, use it the wrong way. You can actually abuse what you think prayer is and just ignore what God says and just try to ask Him to do it. And it just, friend, that will not work. Prayer will not override spiritual law. If you want to see something produced in your life, you got to get involved in the laws that will produce it. Praise God. Now, on the time we have left on today's broadcast, which isn't much, I want to read you a verse in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13. It says this, Happy is the man that finds wisdom and gets understanding. For the merchandise of it, of wisdom and understanding, is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof is better than that of fine gold. She, talking about wisdom and understanding, is more precious than rubies, and all the things that you can desire are not to be compared unto her. Uh, the Britain version says, No precious thing is equal to her in value. The CV says, Wisdom is more valuable than precious jewels. Nothing you want compares to her. The Message Bible says, Nothing you could wish for holds a candle to her. The easy to read says, Nothing you desire has more value. Now, what, what, did, we, what, what did we read there? Wisdom and understanding according to God, is more precious than rubies. And there is not a thing in this life that you desire that is more valuable than wisdom and understanding. Now that's, that's something. God talks big about wisdom and understanding, and, and specifically wisdom and understanding about how things work. That's what Proverbs is. Proverbs is a book revealing to you and I how things work. And, and what he, God is saying is that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of how things work, it's more precious than rubies. And there's nothing you can desire that is more valuable than this wisdom of how things work. Praise God. Now, God in His Word reveals to us spiritual law. You know, the Bible is multifaceted. Um, it is a revelation of God Himself. Uh, it is a revelation of the will of God, the plan of God, the love of God. A lot of different things going on in the Bible, in the written Word of God. But one big thing that's going on in the written Word of God is God is showing us how things work. Seek first the kingdom, these things will be added unto you. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Meditate the word day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. Then you'll make your way prosperous. Then you'll have good success. Why, why did God say those things to us in here and then have it written down for us? He's showing us how things work. And He's saying that, that this wisdom, this, this knowledge, this understanding of how things work, it's more precious than rubies. And nothing you can desire can compare to it. And so, um, lack of knowledge about spiritual law and how things work, it makes you vulnerable 
Hosea 4, 6 said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And then Proverbs 2, 11 says this, Understanding, which is knowledge, intelligence, wisdom, understanding shall keep you. What? Understanding would keep me and protect me? Keep the bad stuff out? Let the good stuff in? Understanding would do that? Understanding, wisdom, knowledge of how things work is actually a line of protection for you because you know how things work. And if you don't have understanding, if you don't have knowledge, if you don't have wisdom, you won't be kept. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, it says in Hosea 4, 6. And so if we fail to understand spiritual law, if we fail to understand how things work, we're going to struggle in this life. We're going to be vulnerable, susceptible to, to things the enemy brings. Ignorance of these laws, spiritual laws, can cause people to live on the wrong side of them and then, and then have to experience evil or death or the curse in their life. And that's one of the big reasons why God is saying this wisdom, this is more precious than rubies. Nothing that you desire can be compared to her. Because if you ever get into this book and figure out how things work, this book is absolute. This book is the truth. And if you ever figure out that seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you, your days of lack are over. If you ever figure out how carnally, to be carnally minded is death and to be spiritually minded is life and peace, if you ever figure out how that works, your days of stress and worry and fear are over. And that's why wisdom and knowledge and these things are so precious. Um, uh, that's why you can't desire any, you can't find anything more valuable than wisdom and knowledge and understanding of this word, of spiritual law, of how things work. And so here's what the Lord said in Proverbs 2, 2. He, it says this, So that thou incline your ear unto wisdom, and apply your heart to understanding. If you cry after knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures, then shall you understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. What's God telling you in there? He's telling you how to get wisdom. He's telling you how to get understanding. Remember in Proverbs 4, that's what he said. He said, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. And so, friend, wisdom and understanding is not just going to fall on you because you're a Christian. I mean, I'm not looking around at anybody. But you can be a dumb Christian. <laughs> and, and you and I have, have, have been in that boat at some point in time. Hopefully we're a little further along than we used to be. But wisdom and understanding doesn't just fall on you. God said, get it. That means you need to go get it. And then in Proverbs 2, he's telling you how to get it. He's basically saying, you got to go after it with all of your heart. you got to search for it like you're searching for hidden treasure. And when you do it like that, God said, you'll find it. You'll get knowledge, you'll get wisdom when you go after it with all of your heart. And so you and I need to get into this book. Get into a church that preaches the Word. Find a good-looking guy that'll have some good broadcast online for you. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, I'm kidding, of course. And feed on those broadcasts. And feed on, on the Word and getting in Scripture and reading the Word and get into a good church. Because wisdom and understanding, there's nothing that's more valuable than that about how things work and about spiritual law. And God told Joshua, He basically told Joshua, getting in this book is the key to success in this life. He told Joshua this, and I'm closing, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein, for then you'll make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. God is basically telling Joshua, the key to your success is to get into this book and make it your life. If you meditate in it day and night, you'll do what it says, and if you do what it says, you'll prosper and have success. 
And Freeman, you're talking about getting understanding in spiritual law. How things work. That starts with getting into this book and studying it and spending time in it. And you'll start to learn things like those that honor me, I will honor. You'll start to learn things like, well, if I confess my sin, I'll get mercy. If I hide and cover it, I won't prosper. You'll start to, to find uh, things in there like uh, those that, that despise the word will be destroyed, but those that fear the commandment will be rewarded. You'll start to find things in there like my son, attend to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart and they would be life to you and even health to your flesh. Well, see, where do you find all that, how things work? You find it right here in this book. And this wisdom and this understanding and this knowledge of how things work, knowledge of spiritual law, knowledge of God's Word, it's more precious than rubies. And nothing you can desire can compare to it. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we do thank You today. We are hungry for wisdom, for knowledge, for understanding about how spiritual things work, about how things work about how spiritual law works. And Father, I pray over everybody watching the broadcast and any of them that go after knowledge and understanding like you laid out in Proverbs chapter 2. Father, I'm in agreement with them that they will grow in wisdom, they will grow in knowledge, and they will find the understanding that they seek. I thank you for helping them to get understanding of spiritual law and then by your Spirit helping them to get on the right side of spiritual law so that they can see the victory and the blessing and the prosperity and the success that you want for them in their lives. And Father, I do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching the broadcast today. I believe as you go forward, you're going to get some understanding about spiritual things and about how spiritual things work like you never have before. And even some things that maybe didn't work in the past and there's a reason why they didn't work, I'm in agreement with you that God's going to give you some understanding of why they didn't work. And as He does, I just know you're going to increase in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and it's going to propel you into a place of great victory and great blessing in your life. Thank you so much for watching the broadcast. Stay and hook with me the whole series. And hey, don't forget to come back next time. We're going to have an all-new series, and it's going to be good. We'll see you then. Today's broadcast was made possible by the partners of Matthew Alaria Ministries and the members of North Smoke Church. Go to mam.tv to become a partner today and help us take the message of faith to this generation.